Welcome to Hardware Engineering. Today, we will explore the challenges and solutions related to radio coexistence and decence in modern smartphones. Let's begin with an overview of our agenda. We will discuss what coexistence and decence mean, their impact on smartphone performance, examples and causes of decence, measurement techniques, mitigation strategies, a case study on shielding, and finally, future trends and challenges. What is radio decence? Decence refers to a phenomenon where a receiver's ability to detect weak signals is compromised. In other words, decence refers to a degradation of receiver's sensitivity. For a radio system, sensitivity refers to the minimum detectable signal. It is defined as a sum of the thermal noise floor, which is negative 174 dBm per hertz, the noise figure, which is a property of the receiver system, uh, bandwidth, and the minimum signal to noise ratio as defined by your receiver system. Decence typically happens when the noise floor increases around the signal of interest. The noise floor here being the sum total of thermal noise, the noise figure, and the unwanted signal. When decence happens, the receiver is unable to resolve the difference between the noise and the signal of interest. The cartoon on the top right side depicts a power versus frequency spectrum of a radio signal centered around 2.65 GHz. The power of wanted signal is about negative 60 dBm and the noise is around negative 100 dBm, giving an SNR of 40 dB. The cartoon below depicts a desensitized case where the noise floor increases to minus 70 dBm, degrading the SNR to 10 dB. If you have a radio system that is designed to operate at a minimum SNR of 12 dB, such a high level of decence will render your system useless. Next, we talk about how decence can significantly impact user experience. For scenarios involving simultaneous operation of Wi-Fi and LTE, or even 5G, one can face issues such as dropped phone calls, slower data rates, or even a reduced connectivity range. These issues are critical in maintaining the quality and reliability of smartphone communications. Let's take a look at a real world example for a smartphone where the Wi-Fi performance is degraded due to out of band noise from LT band 41. For the smartphone depicted on the left side, the Wi-Fi at 2.4 gig is active on the upper antenna and the LT band 41 is active on the lower antenna. The frequency spectrum for Wi-Fi is shown in the gray cartoon on the upper side. And the LTE frequency response is shown in the red cartoon on the bottom side. The Wi-Fi in-band signal is centered around 2472 megahertz. And LTE is centered at 2512 megahertz. Bandwidth for both the signals is 20 megahertz. And by bandwidth, I mean the width of the in-band signal. The superposition of the spectrum on the upper antenna is shown in the cartoon on the right hand side. You can see how the SNR for the Wi-Fi spectrum is degraded due to out of band response of the LT band 41 signal. This degradation in SNR causes decence. Notice that the LT band 41 power has also been attenuated by some amount compared to the lower antenna. And that is a function of antenna isolation between the upper and the lower antenna. Next, we talk about causes of decence. 
It can be caused by both internal and external factors. Internally, poor component placement, lack of shielding, and inadequate antenna isolation are common causes. Externally, it can be proximity to other electronic devices such as other smartphones, Wi-Fi access points, and so on. The cartoon on the right side depicts a PCB with bad design practices. Notice how antenna 1 and 2 are in close proximity of each other and are also exposed to the digital clock and data signals on these yellow board-to-board -board connectors. In addition, the various subsystems such as the RFIC, the power management IC, and the SOCs are not shielded from each other. Here is an example of a better design. The antenna 1 stays in the similar location as before in the upper hemisphere. The antenna 2 has been pushed to the lower hemisphere to increase the antenna to antenna isolation. The digital B2Bs have been pushed to the right, thereby increasing the isolation between antenna 1, and the data and the clock lines. The RFIC, the power management IC, and the SOC have their own shield cans depicted in these black boxes. Let's switch gears and talk about how to measure decents. The first step would be to create a matrix of victims and aggressors. In this example, the victim is LT band 41 and the aggressor is Wi-Fi 2.4 gig. Then we measure the baseline sensitivity for LT band 41 with the aggressor off. One might ask how to measure sensitivity and the way to do it is to have a call box which is a cellular base station em emulator, an antenna, and a smartphone. Once you set up a phone call on the call box, you measure the uplink and downlink power. You start off with a high downlink power and start decreasing it until you hit a block error rate of 5%. Now, we've already measured the sensitivity with aggressors off. The next step is to measure it with the aggressor on, meaning you turn on Wi-Fi on the smartphone and then measure the sensitivity on LT band 41. The difference between the two measurements should give you the decents. Next, you populate the decents matrix. In the example shown below, the baseline sensitivity for LT band 41 is about negative 100 dBm, and that's about 0.1 picowatts. When you turn on Wi-Fi, you're only able to measure LT band 41 as low as negative 90 dBm, which is about 1 picowatt. This gives you the decents of 10 dB. Let's talk about mitigation strategies for decents. Shielding is one of the most popular techniques out there in the industry right now. You can create a shield can around sensitive components such as the RFIC. If you're heavily constrained on space, you can also go for self-shielded electronic components. Optimizing PCB layout and the component placement is another way out. For example, you can bury the sensitive um, clock and RF lines into the inner layers and surround them with ground vias. For components, if shielding is not an option, you can try increasing the air gap between them. Improving antenna isolation is another good way, specifically for coexistence scenarios, because this can help reduce the aggressor power, as we saw in one of the examples shared in the previous slides. For RF frontend specifically, using advanced filtering technology is another good way. For example, you can use a BAW filter as opposed to SAW. BAW is a 3D filter, whereas SAW is a 2D filter in terms of acoustic wave operation. BAW, being of high quality factor, can provide, provide better out-of-band rejection while maintaining good in-band insertion loss. 
in addition to all the hardware techniques, one can also re uh, resort to software solutions such as the adaptive frequency hopping as seen in the case of Bluetooth where the channels switch rapidly in a pseudo-random pattern. There is a dynamic frequency selection as seen in case of Wi-Fi where the channels switch if an interferer is detected before or even during the operation. There's also dynamic antenna selection in case of modern smartphones where one can choose the right pair of say the Wi-Fi or the cellular antenna for better isolation. Let's take a look at a case study involving motherboard from the latest iPad Pro. This was taken from a teardown video by iFixit. Apple has used clever shielding techniques to minimize descents and improve overall device performance. On the top, they've used a soft shielding material, likely copper, to cover the entirety of the electronic components. The bottom picture shows the exposed version. The SOC looks like it's in the middle and pretty much all the electronic components are surrounded by this super long shield wall um, made out of some sort of alloy. You can also notice that the various subsystems, for example, the SOC and its related components, um, certain electronic components on the left side, certain electronic components on the right hand side, which are not revealed yet, um, they're separated by shield walls. For example, there's a shield wall to the west of the SOC located here, and there's another shield wall uh, located to the right of the SOC here and here. I would say overall, this is a pretty neat design. We are now at the last topic of our presentation. Looking ahead, we are going to have increasing number of radios and miniaturization constraints. Smartphone design will get challenging as we start incorporating new technologies such as 6G and newer direct to satellite features. Since 6G will likely cover the newer 10 gigahertz and sub terahertz frequency spectrum, your smartphone will potentially have additional RF components, thereby forcing miniaturization to maintain current smartphone form factors. As the coexistence landscape becomes complicated, innovations such as AI-driven interference management um, for things like channel selection, um, antenna management and transmit power will become crucial. There's also a lot of scope for improvement in RF components, such as um, a more efficient IC design and a higher Q um, RF filter design uh, for better in-band loss and higher out-of-band ejection. Newer manufacturing techniques for shielding is also going to be super important. If you take a look at the picture on the right side, the shield cans can have really wonky shape. And as um, smartphones get, the smartphone PCB gets more miniaturized, the requirement for thinner shield can will, with custom shape and lower cost is gonna be pretty important. All in all, it's a pretty growing field and there's a scope for a lot of innovation and improvement. Hope you like this uh, webinar and thank you for your time.